Welcome, everyone. We are thrilled to have you join us today as we journey towards bettering our mental health. I'm your host, Monica, and I'll be your guide through this discussion with none other than my sister, the esteemed mental health expert, Dr. Sanika Gaynor, who will provide invaluable insight for us today. And I'll drop a gem or two the Mean Girl way. We have an exhilarating lineup. However, our focus is this resurrection season, a time of renewal, hope, reflection, and transformation. So sit back, relax, and take the time to embark on a journey to live a better and healthier life. Welcome to Praise Time TV. Tragedies are commonplace All kinds of diseases People are slipping away Economy is down People can't get enough pay But as for me Folks without homes are in the streets, and the drug habits, some say, they just can't beat. Muggers and robbers, no place seems to be safe, but you've been my protection every step of the way. I want to say thank you all for all you've done for me.
and restore all the flow. You can have your way now, heal. Only you can restore overflow. Say, you can have one more time, tell him. Say, heal every broken heart. Every sickness overflow in this place. You can have. Why won't you heal? Restore. Overwhelm us in your presence. You can have your way now. One more time, hands lifted. Heal. Restore. Overflow. your voices and give him glory. It's Friday. Jesus is praying. Peter is asleep. Judas is betraying. But Sunday is coming. It's Friday. Pilate's struggling. The council is conspiring. The crowd is vilifying. They don't even know that Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are running like sheep without a shepherd. Mary's crying. Peter is denying. But they don't know that Sunday's are coming. It's Friday. The Romans beat my Jesus. They robe him in scar. They crown him with thorns. But they don't know that Sunday's come. It's Friday. See Jesus walking to Calvary. His blood dripping. His body stumbling. And his spirit's burning. But you see, it's only Friday. Sunday's come. It's Friday. The world's winning. People are sinning, and evil's grinning. It's Friday. The soldiers nailed my Savior's hands to the cross. They nailed my Savior's feet to the cross. And then they raised him up next to criminals. It's Friday. But let me tell you something. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. The disciples are questioning what has happened to their king. And the Pharisees are celebrating that their scheming has been achieved. But they don't know it's only Friday. Sunday's coming. It's Friday. He's hanging on the cross, feeling forsaken by his father left alone and done. Can nobody save him? Oh, it's Friday, but Sunday's come. It's Friday, the earth trembles, the sky grows dark, my king yields his spirit. It's Friday, hope is lost, death has won. Sin has come, and Satan's just a laugh. It's Friday. Jesus is buried. A soldier stands guard, and a rock is rolled into place. But it's Friday. It is only Friday. Sunday is a coming.
like Sunday morning. Put them hands together. Uh, 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 uh. Overflow, overflow. I'm getting ready for my overflow. God is opening up the windows. Pour me out a blessing. I won't have room to receive it, Lord. It's my overflow. Everybody say, This way my eyes have never seen God's preparing the net breaking Boat sinking Miracle just for me I won't have room to receive it Lord, it's gone over This day
Welcome back, Praise Time family. I am here with none other than Dr. Sanika Gaynor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having me. I am elated to be here. Yes, yes, yes. So talk to us briefly about what is mental health? When we think about mental health, we are considering functionality, okay. wellness and well-being, as well as our emotional unmet needs. Okay, so for somebody who's new listening, what do you mean by functionality? Everything that we do is within relationships. Got it. Interpersonal or intrapersonal. Got it. My relationship with someone else or my relationship with myself. And so when we're thinking about functionality and we're talking about mental health, we're talking about our capacity within those relationships. What is my capacity interpersonally? Gotcha. What is my capacity intrapersonally? And how well am I functioning within that capacity? If it's low functioning, then it's impairing my daily activity. Gotcha. And so when we're considering mental health, we're considering what, if anything, is impacting your daily functioning. Beautiful. So for the believer who has faith, who sows and tithes and goes to church yes. faithfully, yes. but for whatever reason, there's a disconnect and they're having anxiety about seeking help outside of the pastor. Mm. What advice can you give to them about that? Yes. So I'll start here. Counselors do not give advice. Beautiful. We don't give advice. And I would encourage a different perspective. Mm. For one, I would encourage acknowledging the fear of going to counseling. Mm -hmm. That fear is age old. Mm. It's actually a part of generational trauma. There are reasons why we fear, especially in church communities, specifically black church communities, mm -hmm. why we fear yeah. engaging in counseling. And so acknowledging that fear is important. Secondly, I would encourage challenging the beliefs. Why don't you want to go? And is it because you don't trust? Wow. Yeah. Do you not trust your personal information with someone that does not know you, someone that has not experienced the same issues or circumstances you have? Um, and if you are trying to faith away wow. your emotions. Wow. Explain faith away, because that's a good one. I think a lot of us sometimes might avoid getting the help we need out of fear of being considered a blasphemous or not being a true Christian or believer. What do you sure. mean by faith away? Sure. When I say faith away, I'm saying there's a lack of acknowledgement of emotions. Mm. And so when we're experiencing hard feelings, mm. we go to the word and apply the word inappropriately. Ah, okay. We don't acknowledge the humanness of Jesus Christ all the time. Beautiful. We don't acknowledge the emotions and feelings he expressed during his time here on earth. Right. So it's important to acknowledge our emotions, feel our feelings as we move towards healing. If we are faithing away our emotions, we might be living in a space of denial. Wow. Wow, so you can be shouting and jumping and all the things and still be living in a state of denial, which I don't believe that's who God has called us to be in any capacity. What advice would you give maybe the Christian pastor yes. who finds himself in the position as the leader, however, they too are dealing with hardship and depression? Absolutely. It's important to acknowledge that they too need counseling yeah. support, support with mental health um, because of their capacity. Mm -hmm. When put in the position to help or guide someone else, mm -hmm. a pastor or leader um, should be mindful of not crossing over into a counseling role. Very good. In the same way, counselors should be mindful of not, of not crossing over into a pastoral role. Right. Right. They are distinct roles, and they can complement one another. Right. So for pastors who are experiencing hard times because they are human beings, and they're thinking about their capacity, and they're thinking about the emotionality of what they do, mm -hmm. they too, I encourage, to seek, need support mm -hmm. and should seek um, support from a counselor who understands their position. Absolutely, so it's safe to say that you can love the Lord and seek therapy. 
Absolutely. God bless people with people. Absolutely. Yes. And the word speaks to how we are to think about our emotions. Yes. The word says to be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Right. It also talks about be anxious for nothing. Right. Why would he use anxiety in the word if he didn't know that it's a part of our makeup? Absolutely. It's within our flesh. Mm -hmm. And so God knew mm -hmm. that anxiety sometimes will drive us to mm -hmm. be impulsive, mm -hmm. to be fearful. Mm -hmm. To worry about things that have not even happened Absolutely. yet. Absolutely. Um, and so it's a constant renewal of the mind mm -hmm. so that you're shifting your focus to what God has for you. It's not a denying of the emotions. Mm -hmm. It's a renewal. Absolutely. That's beautiful. Mm -hmm. And that's what this resurrection season is all about. Understanding the power that comes with his death burial. But when he rose again, we too can be renewed in spirit and in mind. And I think we oftentimes forget that as believers. Yes. We're worried about the spirit, but we also need to consider our minds. Thank you so much. We'll be right back with more with Dr. Seneca Gaynor. Friday afternoon, and Jesus is dead. His brutalized body hanging without life on a cross dropped into a hole in the dirt. His executioners had dug the holes, prepared the place, and done their job with ruthless efficiency. This wasn't how it was supposed to be. The hope of mankind overcome by powers of hell, by the shadow of a grave. We once knew what it was like to rule and reign on the earth. We were made to live in the light, in relationship, in purpose. We were made for more than what we've come to accept as normal. Ever since the garden, Satan and his kingdom have been tightening their grip. Darkness has ruled evil, chaos, suffering, hopelessness. We've been enslaved and crippled by the holes the enemy has been digging for us too. Instead of killing the Messiah, the cross became a catalyst for salvation. The hole that was dug to hold an instrument of shame and death was instead filled with an instrument to bring healing and new life. That's the way God is. Nothing is impossible with him. He's always restoring, always renewing, always able to take what was meant for evil and turn it for good, to take our graves and turn them into gardens. Why? because he never gave up on his plan. He has never given up on us. He knows what we don't, that you can't have resurrection life without death, Jesus. He died so we can have lives of purpose and power over the grave. He is not dead, he is alive. And because he lives, we can live again. with Dr. Gaynor. These days, mental health, seeking help from a licensed therapist isn't as taboo as it used to be. Sure. However, there is a big difference in terms of expressing um, this idea that we need help, especially among men and women. Absolutely. 
In terms of expressions, how, what are some differences that you've noticed as the professional between men and women expressing their desire for help, the need for help? What differences, if there's any, can you speak to? Sure. I think that when we talk about men and women um, so often in conversation and the differences, we further stigmatize mental health. Wow. At the same time, I can't acknowledge the expression of what's going on with us is different mm -hmm. in some ways. It's only because we have not learned maybe how to express. Mm -hmm. So it is common that the expression of emotions um, is not widely seen by men. Right. Whereas women mm -hmm. tend to have more ability to express. Mm. It doesn't mean though that women are appropriately or expressing their um, emotions in a healthy manner. Oh, wow. It's just expression yeah. and the expression looks differently. Mm -hmm. For example, one can seek attention mm -hmm. and seek undue attention, but the mistaken goal in seeking the attention is that an individual is attempting to meet an objective mm -hmm. that does not truly address an underlying issue. Wow, okay. So my seeking attention then is really because I am looking for connection. Wow. But it won't be what I convey and it won't be what I express. Mm. In the same way for a man, lack of attention or withdrawing or emotionally abandoning mm. a relationship or a situation mm -hmm. may be a sign also for connection. Right. The expression of that looks different though. Right. I'm not going to seek your attention. I'm going to figure out how I can do without it mm. as if I don't need it. So the root issue is the same, but the way we express it looks different. Yes. Can the same be said about culture? Because oftentimes, especially in the African-American community, our expressions are perceived as volatile um, yes. when possibly there's an underlying issue that isn't spoken to because being strong is all we know how to do. Can you speak to possibly how important it is to understand that expressions don't just vary by gender, but also across the cultural spectrum? Absolutely. There's always an underlying issue. Yeah. There's always a reason why someone is doing what they're doing. Yeah. There's a reason why someone's angry. There's a reason why someone is sad. For example, anger means that one is feeling undervalued. Wow. There is something that has happened that is causing one to feel less significant. Wow. And they're seeking significance within a relationship, mm -hmm. whether it be intrapersonal or interpersonal. Mm -hmm. If someone is sad, they're seeking connection. They're trying to figure out um, where is the disconnect between their heart, their heart posture, and someone else's. Mm. So there's always an underlying issue, an underlying uh, current when it comes to our emotions. Mm -hmm. And so if we're thinking about the cultural landscape, we are considering the why. Mm. Why is one feeling this way? Why are they expressing it in this way? We forget that emotions manifest themselves through anger yeah. because we don't always know how to express each emotion. How does one express disappointment? Right. How does one express fear? Right. It's not like the smiley face chart, you know, like you have in school where you can point to, I'm disappointed today. Yes. I'm walking through life. I don't have yes. a sign or an emoji in front of me to say that. Yes. So we don't know how to clearly convey that. Wow. Yes. That, that was good. Mm -hmm. Yes. So it comes out as frustration. Right. Right. What is really, I'm hurting inside. Yeah. And not everyone knows what that looks like or mm. sounds like. All they know is the pain. Yeah. Yeah. So last question, as ministers and Christians, how do we ensure we're not overstepping boundaries when it comes to spiritually guiding people in one direction and potentially attempting to do the work of a licensed therapist and or counselor? Remain cognizant of capacity, yeah, of your scope and of skill. So often people who identify as Christians and are church members or church attendees um, say that they want a Christian counselor. Yeah. Because they want to feel that 
they are meeting with someone that will have the same spiritual wherewithal. It's interesting, though, that if one needed a surgeon, wow, they on. would not ask for a Christian surgeon. Correct. If one needed a dentist, mm -hmm. they would not ask for a Christian dentist. Right. They would look for someone who has the skill yeah. to exercise mm -hmm. the craft. Right. Same with counselors. Yeah. I would encourage, before stepping over that line, consider your scope. Consider your capacity and then encourage your parishioners to look for a skilled mental health professional. Yeah. God can use anyone. Yeah. Yeah. And speak through anyone. Yeah. Right. What we're looking for is not someone who is the same as you. Yeah. We're looking for someone that can sit with you in what you're experiencing. Yeah. Thank you so much, Dr. Gaynor, for that insightful information. Praise time family. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back soon. Before the dawn of creation, there was the Word. Before the beginning had begun, before the planet spun and the sun hung in the sky, there was the Word. He was the light, and the light was alive, giving life to all things, everything. No thing was created except through Him. And in His image, He created them, us in his likeness to reflect the light and be just like him but sin came on the scene and everything went dark not even a spark left we were hard pressed for a savior he had offered us his love in exchange for our trust but we could not live up to his standard of perfection we were dejected broken hostile hopeless but this is the gospel we put our hope in, that God, in his endless wisdom, fashioned the word into flesh, and he pitched his tent in the midst of our mess, and the rest is history. The mystery of the cross, the incalculable cost of his life in exchange for our imperfection, the beauty of his resurrection, giving us life in exchange for his death when we call upon his name, Jesus giver of grace, purveyor of peace, master of mercy, the word, the one who bore the scars that we deserve. Have you heard the gospel, the good news, not what you can do for God, but what he has done for you. It is finished. God's plan since before the beginning, the greatest story ever written, broken by sin, but restored when we surrender to the word. This is the gospel. Have you heard?
if you're ready to hold on. Put your foot on the floor. Hey. lives to be in control. But where do we turn when they're not? When the storms hit us out of nowhere, what happens then? We can hide the weight of our worries behind the smiles on our faces. We can try our best to mask the hurt and to cover over the pain. But in our private and alone moments, we're praying with tears and we're longing in desperation for something to change. So in moments like these, we need to be reminded of something that we probably already know. That if you're in Christ, it's all going to be okay. As the waves rise and as the earth crumbles all around, as the regrets mount and as the uncertainty refuses to give way, if you're in Christ, it's all going to be okay. This has nothing to do with positivity or wishful thinking. Rather, it's because we have this hope as an anchor for our souls. That if Jesus Christ was raised from the dead on the third day, and if the power of God was behind it all, then truly beloved, there can be no greater truth than this. If you are in Christ, if you are in Christ Jesus, whether you see it fulfilled in this life or the next, it's all going to be okay. So 
I was an orphan I put your name on it You put your name on me I was a label No identity I put your name on it You put your name on me I was a sinner Thought it was over Time TV.
Until next time, may your spirits remain lifted and your hearts forever connected in praise.